Okay, here's a little one on uh, plants absorbing minerals from the soil. Quick word on minerals first of all, we, we use these kind of confusing terms like plants absorbing substances or nutrients or goodness from the soil. Not really the, the right words to use. If you think of nutrients as things that um, people and, and animals uh, would eat, like carbohydrates, protein, lipids, those kind of things. Now plants don't eat food like that. Plants have to absorb um, any substances and then make their own food. If you, you remember from um, glucose main photosynthesis, we can then make lipids and we can make proteins and so on. Best way to think of it, I suppose, for minerals is like an element. So humans, for example, we need minerals like the element iron for our blood, or we need um, the element calcium for bones and teeth and for, for muscle contraction. So what minerals are we talking about here? Well, plants absorb quite a few minerals, things like potassium. They absorb, they need magnesium in order to make chlorophyll. Um, they absorb phosphorus in the form of phosphates. Um, but the one we're particularly interested in is nitrogen. If you remember, nitrogen um, in its uh, element form usually is found uh, as N2, it's a gas, 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen. Plants can't absorb nitrogen in this form, but they do need it. So plants need it to make uh, things like DNA, contains nitrogen, uh, to make amino acids, uh, of course to make proteins, because proteins are just a big long chain of amino acids, a polymer of amino acids if you like. So it's a pretty important uh, mineral for them to absorb. It's found um, in the soil and it's found in the form of nitrate. Now nitrate simply means uh, this molecule. Remember if it's got eight on the end, what it's telling you is there's oxygen there. So nitrate, nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, NO3, one nitrogen and three oxygens. Uh, and in fact it's usually found as an ion. It's got a negative charge it's a molecule with a negative charge here. Um, if you were to get a tub of nitrates, you might find, for example, um, you might find potassium nitrate. There you go. But what it does when you dissolve this substance, the potassium and the nitrate split off into two separate bits. Okay, and so that's the bit we're interested in. These nitrates are soluble, so they dissolve in the water. If you were to look at a plant root, so here's our plant, the roots, if we were to um, look at one of these and magnify it massively, what you would find is the cells that make up the wall of these roots have these little, they're called root hair cells, although these aren't really hairs, um, they're little projections, they're called, that stick out the side of the cell. So this would be flutter around in midair. There's more cells here. Um, this would be just be one side of the cell, uh, one side of the root. It's it's not just a flat thing. It, it it goes all the way around. Obviously, I can't draw that in 3D, but just so you get that idea. So these little projections. And here's a, a really good term to use. It gives the roots a large surface area big thing in biology, whenever you're going to absorb something, whether it's absorbing oxygen in the lungs, it has a large surface area. Absorbing food in the small intestine, <coughs> excuse me, large surface area. It's a large surface area for absorption. Notice there, it seems like it should be a P, like absorption, but it's not. It's spelled absorption. So large surface area for absorption of nitrates. Okay, that's what we'd call, um, if you were asked a question that said something like, how does the structure of roots um, help them to absorb minerals? You could say, well, they have these root hair cells that have projections on the side, which increases the surface area. There's a root hair cell. Gives it a large surface area for the absorption of nitrates. Okay, and there, there's an answer. Now, if we were to look a little bit closer, so again here's a, a root hair cell, just magnified a little bit. This of course would be sticking out into the soil, so I'll just put some big blobs of soil like this. Of course we're magnifying it so much that these look like huge lumps, but of course that's what soil is. It's uh, a mixture of lumps of rock 
and dead plant materials, basically what soil is. Um, so we'd have water in between these gaps, little bits of water, all kinds of stuff. There we go. And we might also have our nitrates, which I'm drawing in red here, if you can see that. Now, inside the cell itself, we would also have lots of nitrates, but the problem is this. There are more nitrates inside of the cell than there are outside. Now, from what we know about molecules, we might expect the nitrates to be diffusing out of the cell. Now, that's no good to us. We don't want it to go from the high concentration in the cell to the lower concentration um, in the soil. So we don't want, we can't rely on diffusion to get uh, nitrates to go in because there's a higher concentration in the cells. And that's quite a common thing with cells. Um, if a cell is going to build up lots of molecules, you can't rely on diffusion because the higher concentration is inside the cell. So we're not relying on that. What we do use though is active transport. Active transport makes use of carrier proteins and these sit in the, if you were to look at the uh, cell membrane of a plant cell, there's our cell wall. Uh, let's draw it in red. There's the cell membrane, it's not quite pushed up against the wall. But these carrier proteins would be sitting all the way around this membrane. I've, I've really exaggerated the size there, that you wouldn't be able to see them just looking at them. But they're there all around this um, membrane. And what the carrier proteins do, they're the ones that um, they sit in the membrane, they kind of flip the stuff through. Okay, there you go. Brilliant model. There's my uh, nitrate. The carrier protein changes shape and it flips and it moves. It's a rubbish model, isn't it? Flips and it moves this stuff through. Okay. That's what these carrier proteins do. In order to do that, though they require energy, remember active transport requires energy. And if we're going to be very scientific, we can also mention that energy is released from ATP, this chemical ATP, and it's that that's used to change the shape of this molecule. Okay, without the energy, the molecule isn't changing shape. The energy that's released from ATP, this chemical in cells that releases its energy easily, will make that change shape and flip through. Again, why not? There's my nitrate, it changes shape and it flips it through and moves it through.